In this video, we're going to use Laplace transform methods applied to LTI systems described by linear differential equations. There are several goals of this analysis. Starting with the system's differential equation, we will first of all find the system's transfer function, h of s, determine if the system is stable or not, find the system's impulse response, h of t, and ultimately find the system output by solving the linear differential equation. Let's start with an example. Suppose we're given a, that a causal LTI system is described by the following linear differential equation. We have the second derivative of y plus three times the first derivative of y dy dt plus two y equals dx dt plus three x. And we're also given the input function to the system, x of t, is the function e to the minus 3t times the step function, u of t. So here's our steps to analyze this system. First of all, we're going to find the transfer function, h of s, by the inspection method that was covered in a previous video. So this is a real quick and simple method of taking the coefficients of the linear differential equation and writing h of s directly from that. So recall all we have to do is for the numerator we look on the right side of the equation with the x terms. The x dt gives us an s and the 3x gives us a 3. Likewise for the denominator the second derivative of y gives us s squared. We have 3 times s for the dy dt and then finally the 2y gives us the 2. So there by inspection, we can write the transfer function. In order to go further with this, we're going to need to factor this transfer function. So you can see this factors to h of s equals s plus 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 2. Step 3, let's construct a pole 0 region of convergence plot for the transfer function. We know that the system is causal. That was given to us up here. Therefore, remember the property that the region of convergence must be to the right of the rightmost pole for causal systems. So let's go ahead and plot the poles and zeros of this transfer function on the s-plane. So we can first see that we have a zero by looking at the numerator, setting it to zero. We get um, s plus three equals zero or s equals negative three. So there's our zero, we'll plot that there. Now we can get the poles since this is already in factored form, it's very easy. We have a pole at s equal minus 1 and a pole at s equal negative 2. So we can plot those two poles here and here. All right, so again, for a causal system, the region of convergence has to be to the right of the rightmost pole, which is the pole at minus 1. So here's our ROC. The next thing we can do is determine if the system is stable or not. Remember the rule that if the region of convergence includes the j omega axis, which it does right here, then therefore the system is stable. The next step is let's um, find the system's impulse response. To find the impulse response, we can start by taking uh, the partial fraction expansion of the transfer function h of s. So remember h of s is s plus 3 over s plus 1 times s plus 2. And we can break this apart into two pieces, a over s plus 1 plus b over s plus 2. Um, we've done partial fraction in a previous video, so we know how to do that technique. Uh, it turns out that this coefficient a ends up being a 2, and the coefficient b ends up being minus 1. So here is our um, decomposed transfer function h of s. The reason we did this is now we can use the inverse Laplace transform by inspection um, to go from h of s in the frequency domain to h of t in the time domain, which is our impulse response. Now, remember that this system is causal. We were told that at the beginning of the problem. Therefore, the impulse response h of t must be a right-sided function. So um, if we look at these two terms up here, which we need to invert, they are both of the form one or a constant over s plus a. Now the problem is there are two different inverse 
Laplace transforms for this. One is for a right-sided function and the other is for a left-sided function. But we've just determined that h of s must be right-sided. So we're gonna use this particular form right here. So one over s plus a gives us by inverse Laplace transform e to the minus a t times u of t. So by inspection, this first term here, we see that a is one. So I have e to the minus one t times u of t. And the two up on top is just a coefficient. So that's gonna go out in front here. That's where the two comes from. Um, we have a minus sign. So there's our minus sign here. And then for this second term, we have a equal two. So we have e to the minus two t times u of t. So there's our impulse response. And we can see that indeed, this impulse response does signify that our system is stable. Both of the terms of the impulse response are decaying exponential functions. And as t goes to infinity, the impulse response will decay to zero. The next steps have to do with actually solving the differential equation and finding the output of the system. So remember that the output of the system in the frequency domain, y of s, is just equal to the input uh, Laplace transform, x of s, times the transfer function, h of s. So let, we need to figure out what x of s is, for, is first. x of s is the Laplace transform of x of t, which was given to us in the problem statement as e to the minus three times u of t. Well, we can use this transform pair right here. This is a right-sided decaying exponential function, and we can see that by inspection, a is three. We have e to the minus three t. Therefore, our Laplace transform is one over s plus three, and the region of convergence for right-sided functions is sigma greater than negative a. So in this case, we have sigma greater than negative three. All right, so we can take this uh, Laplace transform for x of s and multiply it times our transfer function h of s, which is, remember, that's up here. So we end up with this expression here, all, all multiplied together. And notice, um, in this case, it's kind of nice. We have s plus 3 on the top, which cancels the s plus 3 term on the bottom, resulting in 1 over s plus 1 times s plus 2. The next step is we can use partial fraction expansion. The reason we have to do this again is we have found the output or the solution of the differential equation, but we found it in the frequency domain. And so to figure out what y of t is in the time domain, we need to take the inverse Laplace transform. This form right here, uh, we can't do, we don't have a, we can't look this one up in a table or whatever. So we have to use partial fraction expansion to break this thing into two pieces that we can invert by inspection. So the first term is a over s plus one. The second term is b over s plus two. Again, I don't show the details here for partial fractions, but in this case, a is, turns out to be one and b turns out to be minus one. So let's take our uh, Laplace transform again for y of s, and let's just look, take a look at a pole zero region of convergence plot again. So we've got two poles. We've got a pole at minus one and a pole at minus two. Those are plotted here and here. And again, this is a causal system. So the output y of t must be a right-sided function. In other words, it must go forward in time, not backwards in time. And for a um, causal system, remember the ROC has to be to the right of the rightmost pole. So here is our, our region of convergence over here. This also tells us that these two terms here in our partial fraction decomposition, each of those terms must be right-sided. So therefore, our last step here is we can do the inverse Laplace transform of these two terms by inspection, again, using this Laplace transform pair here for the decaying exponential function that is right-sided. So for the first term here, one over s plus one, we can see that a is equal to one, and that gives us e to the minus t times u of t. And I have a minus sign in between there, so that's the minus sign right here. The second term, by inspection, I see that a is equal to two down here. So I have e to the minus two t times the step function. 
And so this is our solution to the differential equation. And remember that what this means physically is this is the output of our system when our input is x of t, which was given by e to the minus 3t times ut. So that signal goes in. Um, the system outputs the signal y of t given by this signal here.